Hey everyone, it's Lisa from the blog farmhousehomeboot.com and today I want to show you how to make a pillow from an old sweater. So last year, my favorite sweater that I wore on tons of my videos was this cream cable knit sweater that I got off ThreadUp that came from Gap. And I went to put it back on after having the baby and I noticed a big hole right on the front of it. I think probably from being stored awake, I eaten by a moth or something. So instead of calling it a complete loss, I decided to make a couple of things for my home with the sweater so that I could still use it because I loved it so much. So I made a few Christmas ornaments as well as this pillow. For today's video, I'm gonna show you how to make the pillow in case you come across a really cool sweater from Goodwill or the thrift shop. And then in another video coming up very soon, I'm gonna show you how to make the ornament. So to start for this, I started by cutting out the front of the sweater for an 18 by 18 pillow insert. For that, I just did a 19 by 19 square. I also cut the same size a piece of some leftover grain sack fabric I had. Ideally, drop cloth would be really good. Any like duck fabric that's kind of heavyweight, home decor weight is perfect. I have bolts and bolts of this from the shop that I used to run before we moved and so I wanted to utilize that. Now the reason for that other piece is I decided that it'd be really good to line the pillow cover because I didn't want you to be able to see through these holes in case I was using a colored pillow insert or just whatever I had on hand. Next, I laid my sweater piece on top of my drop cloth piece and sewed them together, making sure to line up all of the edges. Then I made some piping. Now piping is just this little detail that goes around the edge it's really pretty. I don't use it a ton, but I used it on my slip covers and I just enjoy putting it as an extra detail on things. Now, normally you want to cut fabric on the bias whenever you're making piping, but I only had about a quarter yard of this blue flannel. And so I didn't really have enough fabric to cut everything at the bias that I needed to. Now, the reason you cut on a bias is it's nice and stretchy and that helps to give the piping a little bit more leeway, but I feel like you can do it straight and still get pretty good results. So that is what I did here. Then I took some cording, which I'll link in the description below, the cotton cording that I like to use. I just get it off of Amazon and sandwiched it between my strip and then just use a zipper foot to get as close as possible to the cording and create some custom piping. Next, I took two 19 inch by 13 inch back pieces. Those are these pieces here on the back of the pillow. Again, I used my grain sack, so there's a few stripes here on the back, which I end up thinking looks really good. Next, I took my piping and I brought it all the way around the outside edge of my front main sweater piece. Now you wanna be sure when you're doing this to clip around the corners of the piping so that it folds nicely around the edges and then just pin it in place all the way around making sure to curve around where the corners are. Now where you get to the end of the piping, you wanna just overlap them so that it's not very noticeable after you sew it on and turn it out. As you can see here, this is what it ends up looking like on the final pillow cover. Not very noticeable at all that we started and stopped there. Now after pinning that all in place, I just went over to my machine, still with my zipper foot, and sewed it to the front piece. Now the reason for this is you don't want anything shifting whenever you're sewing the back pieces to the front. And so I like to go ahead and sew my piping on before sewing the front to the backs. Next, for the back pieces, I just took two pieces of 19 inch by 13 13 inch grain sack pieces, 19 inches for the length of the pillow, the 13 inches so that they're able to overlap and laid them on to the sweater piping grain sack front piece overlapping with right sides together and then pinned all the way around the edge. Now whenever I went over to my machine, this part can get a little bit tricky and you almost have to feel what's going on because you can't really see. So instead of just sewing in you know a certain number of inches or half inch or whatever i put my hands down around the piping and try to stitch as close as possible to the piping by feel even though i can't see it and i make sure to round those corners so that everything comes out looking really nice and straight 
Now also ordinarily you'll want to finish off the long edge of the back pieces by hemming it, by folding it over a quarter inch, then another quarter inch or half inch, another half inch. I cut mine on the manufacturer edge that's already finished that it won't unravel so that I could save that step. Next, I just trimmed all of the excess from all the layers. At this point, there's a sweater, there is the front piece of grain sack, there is two overlapped pieces of flannel, and then two back pieces. So all those layers, I cut around all the excess to just leave about a half inch. Then I just finish that inside so that there's no raw edges with my serger. You can also use a zigzag stitch. Then I just turned the pillow cover right side out and put it over an insert that I had laying around. I like to use nice feather inserts because they are nice and cozy and they hold their shape a lot better than polyester fiber fill. I'll link some of my favorites in the description box below. Now, of course, I still wish I could wear my pretty sweater, but this does add a nice cozy texture for the winter season to my living room, to any chair in my house. I think that it's really pretty and perfect for the cooler months. All right, well, stay tuned for my next video that I'm gonna be doing on repurposing the same sweater, and that's gonna be some DIY Christmas ornaments. They're super easy. If you don't sew and you don't wanna spend a whole lot of time doing something, this is the project for you because it takes no time at all. Also, if you're brand new, please hit that subscribe button. I make two new videos every week on food from scratch, natural living in a handmade home. Thank you so much for stopping by the farmhouse.